afternoon, everybody. Um, I guess it's morning for some people. Oh, everything's just changed. Morning for some people, <laughs> afternoon. We're all over the place. So mm -hmm. welcome to our presentation. Um, thanks, okay. Jeff, for the introduction of myself and Curtis, both myself and Melissa Humphreys and Curtis Parsons. We are both provincial recruitment um, individuals. And we're happy to have all of you here. So we'll just get started. Um, as Jeff already went over this slide, I guess we'll we'll flip right on to the next one. And Curtis can take it away on this slide. Perfect. So again, everybody, thank you for coming. We're so thrilled to have you here. Um, so I'll jump right in just to the immigration population and growth skills. I'm looking away from the camera. I have it up here next to me. Um, but the skills development funding, it's financial support uh, for eligible, indiv eligible, eligible individuals who are seeking full-time post-secondary training at a public or private training institution. Um, so it's just your general funding. Programs must be 12 weeks or greater in duration or short-term short training of less than 12 weeks. Individuals must be employment insurance eligible and may be engaged in a case management approach with the department. There's a link here to that. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. So can everybody see that? So these here are just some uh, skill development information, uh, shows you the basic steps just to see your funding. Uh, all these links again will be available to you after. Uh, first step receiving any financial assist uh, assistance is the development of an employment plan. So it goes over different things here like client consent, uh, setting up direct deposit, program cost forms, um, as well as different ways to go about it. Back here now. I'll hand the next slide here over to Melissa for student aid. So student aid. Um, Sorry. Oh, it disappeared there. Sorry. Um, the applications for student aid uh, are available very soon. I do believe it is in May. If I'm not correct, someone correct me. Um, applications are filled out online. Uh, what, you, what you'd need to have when you're filling out these applications is your social insurance number, your income, or your parental support, spousal, spousal income if applicable, uh, your parents' date of birth, social insurance number, postal codes, and any dependent children. This is for dependent children only, sorry. You also need your employment, education, and your history for the past five years. Also keep in mind, this is for Canadian uh, students or, or uh, residents. Um. But also for that, we have, oh, sorry, you go ahead. No, go ahead, Curtis. Uh, for that, we have funding available for our full-time students. So this here, um, this page is just applicable to full-time. So you must be enrolled in 80% of your course. So if you have five courses, you need to be doing at least four. 6% uh, for federal funding. Um, uh, people with disabilities must be enrolled at least 40% of a full course load to be eligible for both provincial and federal funding. Different types of funding that you can go about are uh, grants and loans for full-time students, uh, full-time adult learners, full-time students with dependents, students with disabilities, grants for student for services and equipment, students with disabilities, provincial student grant. Um, there's also the Memorial University Tuition Relief Grant, provincial grant for high need students with disabilities, and the Early, Ch Early Childhood Education, which you'll hear called ECE, tuition grant. Um, so, down here. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead, Curtis. <laughs> no, okay. I kind of ran through. <laughs> uh, you go, you go. I kind of ran over. <laughs> That's okay. So, uh, where we have the full time student aid, we also have student aid for part time students. A part time student is enrolled for 20 to 59 percent of their course load. Um, it's available to part time students students with disabilities, there are grants, part-time grants, there are incentive grants, um, and there's a provincial grant for high need students with disabilities. So we have, it's great to see that we have it for both full-time and, and part-time students. Whichever type of learning you guys are interested in doing or whatever works for you, there's always options to help work around your personal style and your uh, um, plan for learning. Um, this here is just some more general information on how to contact student aid. Uh, again, this will be sent out to you a little bit later. 
Uh, there is also employment options. So that's our post-secondary education. It can help you plan your career and examine your post-secondary options to gain the necessary skills to find employment. Uh, assistance available with exploring financial options include funding through the Skill Developments Employment Benefit Program, student aids, and other website and other sources. I'm going to hold up the website here for Employment NL really quickly just to show you guys that. So right here, I'm just going to ask if you speak English or French. It's going to take forever to load. <laughs> Oh. Technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. I don't think that one's going to load in, it looks like. Um, we may have to move on to the next slide, Melissa, because I think that one's not in our yeah. favor. Yeah. Um, but again, these this uh, link will be given to you at a later time, so no worries. Oh, I think it just popped up, actually. It did, okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> Raise, I'm going to uh, dismiss it. Um, so this just kind of runs you through things you can do there about going to school, about finding a job, starting a business, um, different types of employers, employment counseling, workshops and event, job search, career planning. It's a really useful tool, uh, no matter what stage in your education you, uh, you're in, whether you're starting or you're actually finished. Um, I highly recommend you guys utilize that to your benefit. Um, take advantage of it. There, these are all the different things they do here as well. So yeah, really good resource here for you guys. Um, employment options also helps with funding as well. I know we mentioned all those great options, but yes, um, if you are EI eligible, then you are eligible to be able to get funding to go back to a post-secondary institution, college. So keep that in mind also. Um, the next slide, we also have funding for Indigenous and First, First Nations. Um, there's funding for all of these different groups, as you can see. Um, I have difficulty saying the names. Uh, excuse me, so I, I won't because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to say them incorrectly. But um, each council and band um, and nation has different different options available. And if you look on the bottom of the screen, you can see that there's a link to be able to find more information on on those. <laughs> Uh, funding options. Curtis, if you could click it just to show. Oh, fat me a little bit there. Um, so there's things there like Indigenous skills, employment training, program services, delivery organizations, um, just different um, resources here if you come from one of these uh, by backgrounds, just give you a bit more information. Um, as well, if you go down here, there are related links too that can uh, that can help you out in other ways. Uh, other things too with uh, Indigenous and First Nations funding, uh, there is a post-secondary student support program. The program aims to provide eligible students with funding to access educational opportunities at the post-secondary level. To be eligible for funding, students must maintain a satisfactory academic standing within an eligible post-secondary institution that does look different depending on program and institution. So that's why it is a little bit vague, but I'll haul up this link here for you guys now as well. So here's post-secondary student support program. Um, just look at, or, you know, for the first line there, the pro program aims to improve the socioeconomic outcomes for First Nations by supporting First Nations and providing eligible students with funding to access education opportunities at the post-secondary level. Um, so basically, it's just uh, another way to make sure everybody's included and everybody has the opportunity to go to school and do whichever program they desire. Um, there are maximum limits here, which you'll see. But again, uh, please look up uh, your eligibility for this program and um, any further information, our recruitment team is here to help out. And we'll call upon Mr. Ted Power um, to discuss this slide, if if he could. Hello. Hey, Ted, how's it going? Good, good. Hello, everybody. Good. So. Uh, 
My name is Ted Power. I'm a guidance counselor and coordinator for accessibility services at the Princeton Drive campus. So this, I just sent in the chat a link to this actual web page. So this is a screenshot of a web page, essentially. And so students with disabilities. Now, disabilities is a wide spanning definition of what um, what it entails. So it could be physical, it could be learning, like a learning disorder, a learning disability, ADD, ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It could be a mental health condition, uh, depression, anxiety, anything that was diagnosed in school. Um, so yeah, so the main one that I deal with, there's a bunch of stuff here, and I have like some dealings with uh, these with these groups, but the main one that I'm involved with is student aid, and student aid has a section of um, of their of who they are and for disability support. So you can actually, if you can apply, if you apply for a student loan, and you get as long as you have at least one dollar of need for uh, your education like you at least need one dollar you can be grant you can have potential to get a student loan so when you get in the door of that then and you have the proper documentation you can then apply for the grant and there's two different types of grant it's one is free uh, straight money grant money and i think it's it just changed recently next year it's going to be like uh 2400 i think per year and there's also another type of grant which is for services and equipment that could be tutoring it could be a laptop it could be anything like that now i have a couple of counterparts and their names are colleen hickey and charlotte rairdon now colleen hickey is the one who takes care of a lot of the grant money stuff so if you want to, you can always, you don't have necessarily contact her directly. You can just, you can contact me. And I don't think if you're an international student, you will be considered for this because uh, it would just be for a domestic student, I think. I'm not, I'm no student aid, um, student aid expert, but I think that's the case. And that's my email there. So if you had any questions about any of that stuff, you can email me or give me a call. Um, yes. Okay, I just see a question there. So are you able to obtain both funding options? So I know speaking with Colleen, uh, the grants, but with EI option, e, um, that's a good question. And, you know, uh, thank you, Angela. W some people will apply for both EI and the student aid grant. And I still, unfortunately, am not sure of the answer. Um, yeah, I mean, if you have EI, you could you could certainly ask, so. Okay, so yeah, oh, thanks uh, for putting that up on the website. Okay, it, yeah, there you go. Thank you, Angela. You're like the magical genie, Angela, telling us all our our answers. Awesome. Thanks, Ted. So, um, I'm just going to look just for two seconds. I'm just going to look in the chat there. So is there any funding for learned disability? So yes, in a way, like you can just, if you want to, just in the sake of keeping this running, just give me a, uh, just, you can certainly contact me directly. And if you go to staff directory on cna.nl.ca, look me up. If you put in Ted, there's three Ted's and I'm two of them. So because I have two different roles, not because I'm that important. It's just I, I hold two different roles. So look me up, uh, give me a call or give me an email, and then I'll probably give you a call to chat. OK, good. Right on. OK, back to you all. Thanks, Ted. You're welcome. So to continue on, um, there's also funding with the Canadian Armed Forces. Um, the Canadian Armed Forces pays 100% of school fees, including tuition, books, ac academic equipment. Um, and then the individuals earn a salary and a benefits package at the end. When you finish your schooling, you are then with the Armed Forces, but they pay for absolutely everything. So if that's something you guys are interested in, 
on the bottom is the link where you can apply. Keep in mind, you have to be 18 years or older. You cannot apply if you're 17. Um, it's a beautiful program if that's if the armed forces is what you're what you're into. Here's the here's the page that you um, you'll find all the information. After this, after this meeting, we can provide all of the links that we've shown you as well, just so everybody can, everyone can can look at it for themselves. We also have the CNA entrance bursaries. <clears throat> so, uh, just a little run through bursaries are quick little forms you fill out, just uh, describing your needs, uh, financial needs, as well as what you study. Um, that could help you give a little boost. Um, so here at the Fairfax Financial Holdings Limited Entrance Bursary, uh, available to students to meet the following requirements. Graduated from high school no later than 18 months prior to the entrance to their first year of study at the college in September. Achieved at least 75% average in senior high school marks, level 1, level 2, and level 3, or grade 11, 10, or grade 10, 11, 12. Valued at $4,000 and is renewable each year for the duration of students' programs of study, provided the student remains in the same program. The deadline for the next one will be August 25th, 2023, and I'll haul up that link for you guys. So here it's just on our um, website. Uh, it is under um, what we offer. So right here is the Fairfield or Fairfax, it's in Fairfield at Codell, um, Financial Holdings Limited Entrance Bursary. Again, this is just uh, what was on the slide, just a little more detail. So if you're interested in that, I encourage you to hop on our website and check that out. And as well, if you're a student, you can also explore scholarships and other types of bursaries on our website. Um, this one, too, just to continue, is the Joyce Foundation Bursary, which was also there. Um, this one's open to all high school students in all communities in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, based on financial need, and is open to any student wanting to pursue a CNA post-secondary education. Uh, the Joyce Foundation Bursary Program will provide Curtis, I can't hear you anymore. Can anyone else Can hear, hear Curtis? Me Seems I got muted. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll start that one over. Can you hear your guys now? Can you guys hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. Cool. So just to outline quickly, the one on the other page, guys, is the Joyce Family Foundation Bursary. It's open to all high school students in all communities in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. It's based on financial need and is open to any student wanting to pursue a CNA post-secondary education. The Joyce Family Foundation Bursary Program will provide financial support from the time of the student application until completion of his or her program. The deadline for that one is July 28, 2023. Um, this link here will again take you to the same page that I just showed you, and it outlines both those bursaries. Uh, again, I do encourage you to go on our website and look at different opportunities we have that can be offered to you. <coughs> Um, we, we do have other funding options as well, such as student lines of credit, bank loans, RESPs. Um, just to quickly add in here as well, to answer any questions, confirmation of course enrollment will be issued the day after uh, the first day of, after the first day of class in September. That's a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have some to Melissa. Yes, CNA. So now we're going to move on to housing. We just spoke a bit about the funding. So now we'll speak a bit about the housing. This will pertain to our international friends. Um, so feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, here in Newfoundland and Labrador, we have residences. We have one in Bay St. George Stephenville. We have one in Buren and one in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Um, we have accommodations listing by campus. So every campus will have uh, listings for individuals looking to house people. Um, Curtis, if you could click the link just to show them where they could find that. Uh, you go to our website, the CNA website. You go to student housing. Um, if you go to off-campus housing, you'll notice that every campus um, there's every campus is listed. So under that, you'll notice that there are individuals um, with accommodations. Um, Curtis, you can go back to the slide. Keep in mind that these are um, 
these accommodations are strictly uh, separate from CNA. Um, we will give you the options that you can look at, but it is up to you to take care of your housing or your, your accommodations. Um, we've, we've also added um, the Landlord Tenants Act. If you are going to be uh, finding a, a accommodations with individuals or uh, living in an apartment, it's very important that you take a look at this Landlord Tenant Act because it will give you all the guidelines, the rules, everything in there that you need to know and you are prepared uh, fully when you walk into that new home. Yeah, guys, you, you do have your rights when you come to housing, um, you know, ways you should be treated, ways that um, you, know, you can maintain your money or, or anything along those lines. So this outlines and protects you against anything that could potentially come up. Um, we also have our Memorial University residences. Um, so just for people who aren't familiar, Memorial University is uh, also here in St. John's, Newfoundland. It has a couple of houses here. The main one that goes Peyton College, which is a group of houses, uh, usually a two student room. Uh, students attending College of North Atlantic in St. John's can apply to stay at Memorial University's residence by calling the following number. Uh, students attending College of the North Atlantic in Cornerbrook can apply to stay at Grenfell Residence by calling this number. And off-campus housing is strictly between the landlord and the tenant. So all that means is that yourself as well as the landlord are expected to follow the Landlord Tenant Act. Um, I can't speak for um, Cornerbrook, maybe, maybe um, somebody else can, but for St. John's and College of the North Atlantic, a, or sorry, in St. John's for College of North Atlantic and Memorial University, it's a five minute bus ride from their residence up to CNA. So it's very, very close and convenient. To Prince Philip Drive, Curtis, is that what you meant? Yes, Prince Philip Drive, and it's uh, 10 minutes to Ridge Road from uh, Memorial University. Okay. Um, also keep a note too, that if you're coming to uh, CNA, it's important to, uh, as Melissa, uh, mentioned there to see what transportation is available to you. So if you're looking at things like Ridge Road and Prince Philip Drive, busing is no problem. But if you're looking at things further out, uh, such as Seal Cove, uh, you may need to look at finding an apartment uh, with easier transportation. We also have some external housing options as well. Uh, so these are different places you can look for apartments or listings. There's Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji Apartment Listings, and all classified property management groups, as well as Peyton College. Um, Facebook Marketplace is really good for that because there are groups as well of students looking for roommates uh, in both the college and the university. And it's a great way to connect with people uh, in your community and people maybe studying the same thing that you do. Uh, so, some tips and helpful hints. Um, only St. John's and Cornerbrook has public transportation. So, like Curtis said, it is very important for you all to find accommodation that is near your respected uh, college where you're attending. Because sometimes in the winter it gets a little cold and you don't want to be walking 25 minutes to school. So, make sure you choose somewhere that's near. Um, that we also have an interprovincial busing system. Um, it's called the it's called the DRL. Apologies for the flashing. It seemed to have <laughs> gone in there. That could go. bring you if you lived in, say, you were in, in in Cornerbrook and you were out there and you wanted to come to St. John's for a little vacation, you would contact this interprovincial bus. It goes all over Newfoundland. I'm not sure about Labrador. I do know it goes. It's in Newfoundland. Um, just a few words to keep in mind. Um, when an accommodation says POU, it means pay your own utilities. That means you pay your, your heat and light and usually your internet and everything else that comes along with it. Sometimes accommodations say that they're furnished. That means that you'll probably have a couch, you'll have a, a kitchen table, you may have a bedroom. You might have to buy your own um, bed, bed things or what have you, but Sometimes they come like that, and if they're unfurnished, then I suggest going to Kijiji and finding some nice things there because there's always options. Um, does it include Wi-Fi? Snow clearing is important because we do get 
a little bit of snow in the winter and you'd like to be prepared. So find out if they have snow clearing. If not, you need to buy a real great shovel. Um, driveway access, if you are going to be driving or using a vehicle, you need to ask your uh, landlord if there is space for you to park in the driveway. And room and board means, usually it means food and, a and your, your bedroom, if something says room and board. Um, so, also, yeah, go ahead, Curtis. It's also just a poke in there too, guys. If um, on the chance you do have a pet or you'd like to get one too, always check in with the landlord on the uh, advertisement, whether that's allowed. Um, just to save you a little bit of grief. That's also something that's uh, very common. It's about 50-50 whether they allow that. Um, just a little bit of information here to contact us, guys. Again, this will be readily available to you after. Um, so we are available on every single social media. We've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. Um, we're, we're not too hard to find. Um, so contact us in any way. Anybody here in our recruitment team is here to help. Um, if, so after this, I thank you guys for coming and I will turn it over if anybody has any questions to ask us. Um, if you could raise, use the, the hand button to, I see lots of hands, so I'm not really sure. Um, maybe Robin, can you help us with that? Um, yeah, I think that um, it's probably less chaotic um, if we use the chat, I'm thinking. Okay. Um, because there's a lot of people here um, in the meeting. So yes. if, um, yeah, if if you do have a question, let's, um, let's keep using the chat feature, I'm thinking. But I can certainly help you with this part, for sure. <laughs> Um, I'm seeing a lot of um, questions about residences. So I don't know, Curtis, since you're shearing away today, do you want to go back to the student housing part? Sure. Right. So on our website, uh, either becoming a student, if you're international or domestic, uh, there is information listed uh, that speaks directly to our residences. Um, and uh, in terms of contacts, uh, if you're looking for uh, Buren, uh, the campus contact would be, I'll type that in the uh, in the chat here for folks. Uh, Buren residence questions is Madison. Uh, Strawbridge. Piping. CA. Um, and Bay St. George. Uh, residence. Questions is. Vanessa Lee. And Happy Valley Goose Bay. President's questions. Sharon Lucci. Uh, and for prices of our residents, this is also listed on our website. Um, and most residences will include a meal plan option. OK. Uh, and some of these are limited to, uh, you know, a specific number of meals per week, and you can choose uh, and sometimes a couple of options. Well, 
Please. Please. Um, in terms of uh, family residence, uh, the only location that we have a family residence is at our Happy Valley Goose Bay campus in Labrador. Um, Montreal does have family residences. I'm not sure if they're open to seeing these students, but it is worth looking mm -hmm. into as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> for all other campuses, it's uh, you'll be having to look for your own accommodations uh, to search for a place to rent. Um, right. um, now, uh, Nadine, uh, it all depends on where you're staying um, and what campus you're at. Uh, right? so if you're outside of uh, Happy Valley Goose Bay, then there's only the uh, single residence. Right? Mm -hmm. That's correct, uh, April. I'm just trying to go through the chat here. Uh, for residents, take our money over there, send to the mail. I have a question um, here. I don't know if Angela is still here. Um, does student aid fund an entire family? Yeah, so I don't know if you want to answer that question. That's a good one. Do they, sorry, what was that? Do they? Does student aid fund an entire family? So I guess for those mm -hmm. with a family, what can they expect from student aid? Um, no, they don't fund an entire family per se, but when you apply for student aid, they will give you, uh, an when you're assessed for student aid, if you have dependents, you are assessed uh, for a certain amount based on how their ages and how many dependents you have and what your family income is. So you do get money based on whether or not you have children. Does that make sense? Also, uh, Jeff, yeah. you're here. Yes, obviously. Yeah. Um, a lot. I'm looking. I'm seeing in the chat. There's a lot of questions on when acceptances are coming out, in particular for PN programs. Yeah. So um, we've just ex opened up um, our ex additional seats to our PN programs, and I believe that our admission staff right now are working through the application lists. Um, and where our practical nursing program is a competitive entry program, so they'll be reviewing all documents. So I'm not entirely sure when the actual acceptances will be for uh, the additional seats or uh, in those programs. Right? Mm -hmm. Jeff, I heard they were doing uh, mid to late May. Mid to late May. Thanks, Sherry. Yeah, okay. you're mm -hmm. welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, I see some people looking at um, acceptance dates for ECE, right? So again, uh, they're the same thing. Um, you know, we're, we've just added some additional seats there. Uh, so they'll be working through those, right? So, um, and I see a lot of um, admissions types questions here, right? So uh, depending on, uh, you know, what program you've uh, applied for um, and if they've got all the uh, proper documentation to assess your eligibility um, you know it really depends on uh, on how quick the turnaround is for an acceptance um, and just to be aware that uh, you know a lot of our programs um, are highly subscribed to and some might have a, a extensive wait list so uh, if you've received uh, any type of information from the college saying you know, um, you know, thanking you for your application and an acknowledgement. Um, and so they're still waiting uh, to determine any type of, you know, maybe potentially a wait list or uh, might be other things like qualifying documentation and such. So, but, um, you know, this session, we're really unable to answer any admissions questions, right? Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's best off to, uh, you know, for those, uh, especially international students, uh, you know, just to be a little patient uh, as we are going through, uh, you know, a, a quite a backlog of emails and communication. Um, so uh, we've been trying to work through those as, as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm.
Uh, so uh, I really want to apologize, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, not being able to answer your admissions questions this evening, right? Uh, you know, this session is focused on, uh, you know, providing some options to fund your education, uh, as well as where to look for housing or residence options, right? Um, uh, and I'm f looking at some of the questions here, like in terms of the, you know, benefits from international students from benefits from the armed forces grants. That's something I can't and we can't answer. Um, you know, typically it's Canadian citizens that are uh, in the armed forces uh, that will be able to benefit from any type of support. Uh, but we will send them the link, Jeff, so they can take a look mm -hmm. around themselves to see if they can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Find an answer. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, basically what will happen you know, when we send out the uh, the recording, uh, you can look at the presentation again and, you know, if there's links on there that you want to uh, to follow through with, then, you know, by all means, right? Um, uh, Angela, so there's a question there, um, you know, uh, any housing specific funding options available? Uh, Or is that included in, in the evaluation when applying for your loans, right? That That's part of your assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, so when student aid assesses you, one of the questions will be asked is if you will be living at home or away from home. And if you're living away from home, they'll want to the approximate kilometers of, of where, um, of how far away you'll be. So then you'll be assessed based on that. So they mm -hmm. have the student aid has a formula that they use when they're doing all of these assessments. So there's a number of things that are taken into consideration. Number one, of course, is your basic cost for your schooling. So how much is tuition? How much is your books? How much is your um, equipment and materials? So all of these are taken into consideration. Then they're going to look at uh, your personal situation. So are you a dependent student or an independent student? That really is determined by how long you have graduated from high school. Um, then they'll look at if, you, if you're married or single, are you a single parent? Are you married with children? There's all sorts of scenarios that they'll look at and do assessment based on that. And then there are some grants that are also available, but these grants you do not have to apply for separately. For example, there have been some questions about the ECE grants. You will automatically be assessed for those if you're in that program. So it do not require a separate application on your part. So the, so the student aid assessment encompasses a large number of areas and you're assessed based on what is submitted in your application. Thank you, Angela. Uh, about the... Um there are maximums with student aid, regardless of you may have you may have a need, but there there are caps to their their amount of funding. Correct. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> they do have their caps. There's there's so much that they're willing to give. No one's going to walk away with <laughs> thousands and thousands of dollars in student aid, but uh, they do have their caps, you know, and and that's reassessed every year. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Dodie, and thanks, Angela. There's a question here, uh, and I'm not sure if we'll be able to answer this, uh, but it's uh, about uh, post-secondary student support for Indigenous. Uh, do they have to wait to see if they're admitted before they can apply for any support? I would contact um, the funding organization themselves mm -hmm. and ask that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Normally you do. Organize it or go ahead. Yeah. When you, you normally when you fill out the application, let's say if it's for Halapu, um, part of the application process is that you have to submit your acceptance letter from the institution. Mm -hmm. So normally you have to be accepted um, to be able to submit the application. Or have you, for high school yeah. students a conditional acceptance. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and Matthias is asking, uh, and the, for our international students, uh, we'll be hosting a pre, uh, <clears throat> uh, 
a pre-orientation or another virtual session as well. Um, uh, and that does that mean that all admissions will have been checked already before that date? Uh, there's no guarantee because <clears throat> uh, you know we, we do have um, you know quite a few uh, applications from international students that have to be uh, entered into our system. And a lot of the times it's waiting on uh, additional documentation that has been outlined in the uh, acknowledgement letter. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson, uh, right now the only scholarships that we'll have open in the near future are our entrance scholarships um, and the rest will be opened up uh, later in the fall uh, for application on. Right? Um, I just wanted to highlight there, Jeff, I don't know if you just said mm. this, you might have, um, mm. but Sharon is here in the chat, Sharon Lucci. I just noticed I've been scrolling down. I can't, I can't keep up yeah. with the chat. It, it's, it's going so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> For any questions yeah. about Indigenous funding, um, she would be, I think, a, a really great contact. And maybe Sharon, mm -hmm. you can put your email <laughs> there um, in the chat so that they can, uh, they can reach out to you. Sure, no problem. Um, yeah. That's for Indigenous funding uh, organizations in Labrador. We can certainly help them out with that. So I'm just going to put my email address here now. Yep, there you go. Um, and there's a, a few questions there about uh, funding and education through EI. Uh, for our Newfoundland students, uh, the best would be to visit the uh, Immigration Population Growth and Skills website that was shared earlier, uh, and that will provide <clears throat> more detail on uh, when to uh, to look at start applying. But uh, earlier, the better. Right. Uh, Paul, that's a good question. Um, that's something, uh, you know, if you want to reach out to me uh, and I'll put my email in the <coughs> chat uh, about uh, funding for landed immigrants. I'm not sure, but. Uh, And for all of our entrance scholarships, the eligibility requirements uh, will be listed uh, on our web page. Yeah, Audrey, um, we will be sharing this session uh, through an email link um, for, for those that might have joined late or have missed it. Uh, so information <clears throat> on our scholarships um, uh, will be available on our college web page uh, or even our main CNA web page. Uh, so, and it is. Perfect. All right. Uh, so links for housing or housing options uh, outside of our campuses that have uh, residences are available on each of our campus web pages.
I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't pay for housing before coming to Canada unless it's with one of our college residences. Uh, right, and if somebody's asking you for money before you arrive to the country for housing, um, that's probably not a good sign, right? Um, I, I just worry. I worry about people getting scammed and and losing money. So uh, I, I would not suggest paying for that uh, before you arrive into the country. Um, there are community food banks um, in some communities uh, across uh, Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, but we also have um, a, a food pantries within our campuses. Right? So. Uh, residence fees are uh, might be a bit different at uh, our campuses that do have residents. Uh, I would advise you to to check out our uh, web page for that for more information. Uh, meal plans may vary per campus. Um, Jeff, I'm just seeing yes. a few questions um, about uh, transportation, um, especially relating to PPD and Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. um, just so students are aware, Prince Philip Drive, PPD and Ridge Road uh, as well as our Field Cove campus, are all located in the city of St. John's. Mm -hmm. So just to make that clear to everyone. And of course, in the city of St. John's, that's of course the capital city here in Newfoundland, Labrador, and there is a public transportation system. So there are buses available. There is a bus thing, a public transit system in, in St. John's. So they, they would cover all three of those campuses. So Seal Cove, Ridge Road, and Prince Philip Drive. They're all located in St. John's. So just for some clarification, because I didn't, I think there's a bit of confusion there. Okay, yeah. Thank you for noticing that. Um, the, the chat's moving pretty quickly, so it's hard to get through it all. Uh, so yeah, so uh, a lot of the times our housing accommodations lists on our campus web pages, uh, they do get updated, uh, you know, more thoroughly uh, during the spring. Um, so uh, in terms of the updates during, uh, you know, the academic year of fall and winter, uh, there's probably not many unless there's more additions to add to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for those that are asking about their documents arriving, um, we are unable to answer that, sorry. But uh, you can follow up with um, the International Admissions Office. Um, outside of our two 
larger cities, uh, St. John's and Corner Brook, there is no uh, public transportation. Yeah, it's probably about five kilometers from Memorial to uh, Prince Philip Drive campus. Or three miles. Yep, and there are a number of scholarships. Um, yeah, it's been answered there. Yeah. Um, nope, our only campuses that have residents are our Buren campus, our Bay St. George campus, and our Happy Valley Goose Bay campus. Um, in terms of uh, staying in the holidays, yes, we will have to, uh, we do vacate our residences because there's no staff um, during the holidays for a, a short period. Well, that's a, that's a wrap. Oh, I think that's a wrap for this evening.